April Snow Productions presents... It is me, KSL of KSL Tech Studios, and I wish all of you a Happy New Year. Uh, today is Friday, January 6th, 2017, and we are going to start off the year by installing a new trackpad in my Lenovo ThinkPad T440. Now, I went to eBay and I had purchased one of these sets, which is probably the same kind of set you'll be purchasing if you are going to do this kind of upgrade. So, inside of this set, you will get, obviously, your trackpad, your replacement T450 style trackpad, and some bubble wrap and an anti-static bag, a driver install guide in very bad Chinglish, and some tools, such as this guitar pick-like tool, and this screwdriver. This is very small on the end. I actually think this is for removing your keyboard screws, which is nice that this comes with it. So, let's get started. After you have shut down your computer, you're going to flip it over and you're going to remove the battery. Now, first of all, if your computer has a built-in battery pack, you should disable that first. So after you've done that, and you need to remove the battery because there are just two things on it. Now, to remove the keyboard, you're going to need to remove the two rubber stoppers that are in the battery compartment. There's one right here, and then there's one right here. You need to remove those stoppers. So I'm going to do that right now with maybe my plastic pry tool, unless I'm going to need to use a screwdriver to be more violent. But I'm going to try and remove those, and then I'll... Uh, show you what to do next with the keyboard process, this particular part of the project. Um, you kind of need to use your small little screwdriver they give you and shove it beside your uh, stopper into the hole and then just take it out. Otherwise it won't, won't work properly. So now we're gonna I did take the base cover off because I thought there was some part that was actually underneath that. I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm too lazy to put the base back on. So I'll just do it this way and it, hopefully it won't be too bad. And you're just going to take a screwdriver and you're going to push. You're going to push. You're going to push. Hmm. There we go. So you're just going to push these up above the keys here, and you're going to take your little tiny screwdriver, because it has a very small end, and you're going to put it um, into the screws that you will see are above the keys. There's one above the uh, control key on the left. There's one above the up arrow key. Um, might be one of, no, that's just my hair. This would be a good time, if you haven't before, to clean your keyboard because this kind of gets out all the uh, grime and stuff. And then there are some more screws, so just take all of the ones that you see that are in the keyboard matrix out and then you can take the keyboard clean out, disconnect it, and then we'll go to the bottom case. When you take out the keyboard, make sure to take care. There's this rubber piece that keeps the keyboard waterproof that goes over this part of where the keyboard connectors are. So take care. Um, make sure there are also two ribbon cables on the back of the keyboard and there are two connectors. One for the keyboard on top and one for the track point on the bottom. Make sure to remove the one on the keyboard first and then take the one for the track point out at the bottom. Okay, just take care of those two connectors and uh, maybe shake your keyboard out or something like that because, you know, these things tend to get nasty the more you use them. So yeah, for sure. And the particular one I have is a light-on keyboard. So no wonder it's such a nice keyboard. But, no, there's no electrical connections there. All right, so we're gonna go flip this machine around here, like so. Now I've got the keyboard taken out, that's even lighter now. And we're going to take out a couple components. So the first thing we're going to need to take out is the hard drive and the 
internal battery, or at least the thing that is in place of the internal battery. So just take out the hard drive very quickly. I think all of these screws are the same, actually. So just take out the hard drive. In my case, it's a nice crucial SSD. I didn't know I'd have to take it out, but oh well. Here it is, taken out. Uh, the next thing you should take out is the battery or the blanking plate in my case. I do have a battery coming. It's just not here quite yet. So we can take out the, cup of the um, blanking plate for it, which is basically there to keep the computer's structural integrity while not having a battery. I'll just put all the screws in that. Um, the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to unplug some connectors near the front. Now I'm not sure how all this stuff works. Um, the first thing you're going to need to unplug is your trackpad. Like so. Take it out. Take out the cable. Um, you're basically going to need to take out any cable near the front that will um, obstruct you from pivoting the motherboard upwards. Because underneath this little section where the SATA connector is, I don't know if you can see it that well, but underneath the section where the SATA connector is, this like little area, there is a um, two screws that you need to remove the uh, trackpad. As you can see, there are two of them over here, but there's still two behind there. So you just simply need to take out all the screws of the motherboard to pivot it upwards. So that's kind of what we're going to do now. Um, just, I think you don't need to take out the screws for the heat sink to do this, because I've seen multiple people who didn't touch the heat sink at all. So that's probably what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get removing some screws. I'm going to pivot up the motherboard. Well, we'll pivot up the motherboard, and then we'll take out this trackpad experience by itself. Um, the first thing you need to do basically, you need to take out all of the screws on the motherboard that have an arrow pointed next to them. Um, all of those screws are what hold the motherboard in. So you put screws into those holes. I mean, you take those out. Um, the next thing you're going to need to do is um, rem you're going to need to basically pivot. No, you're going to have to take out these two connectors. Um, well, maybe not two, depending on your computer. You're definitely going to need to take out the one that connects to the speakers. The other one you're going to need to take out, depending on your machine, again, if your computer's equipped with a fingerprint reader, you're going to need to take out the second one. All right? Finally, after you're done that, you can finally pivot the motherboard up, uh, and then you can get access to the screws that hold in your trackpad. This is the old trackpad. I managed to take this one out. It wasn't too difficult to take it out. The thing that I had the most trouble with was the cable. The cable, it's a very interesting story. Um, it's very difficult to put back in. You really need to uh, know what you're doing to put it back in. Well, I managed to get it put back in. Thankfully, make sure that the um, little thing is down. I did kind of bend the cable a little bit, but what are you going to do? I think it's actually slightly longer for uh, the older trackpad, but whatever it's in and it's in. So now I'm going to basically put together the entire back cover uh, part and then I'll put in and then after that I'll put in the keyboard and I will give this a first test. Hello there everybody. Today is April 15th, 2017. I am KSL of KSL Tech Studios, and I thought that I would have a final little chat with you about the Lenovo ThinkPad T440 and its trackpad swap. Let's see if the camera will focus. Maybe it will not. Anyway, I thought I would show everybody how uh, the rest of the install went and uh, how the drivers so the particular um, trackpad that I bought was this particular one it was from the seller called CD Jack on eBay 
Uh, I've had a good experience with them at least. Um, I think the price has risen a little bit since I first shot the video in about January or so, I believe. But anyways, this is the particular seller and trackpad I bought from. Uh, the one I received is a Synaptics trackpad, and although it might not list in the actual listing, there is it does include a driver installation guide for Windows 7 and 8, but it does also work with Windows 10, so don't worry about it. The particular driver you need is called N10GX25W.exe uh, from Lenovo, which is for this particular trackpad that I got. How do you get that, you may ask? Well, if you look that up in Google, don't go to Lenovo's website. Just take a look here, and it's on OneDrive. This is the particular one I used. Trust me, it's not a virus. I don't know whose this is, but whoever it is, they seem to be a very nice person, so don't worry about that. Um, because I didn't get a virus or anything like that, so you could totally use this one, there's no problem with that. Um, and about the installation itself, um, there's not too bad. Uh, you probably saw the first part of it. My main problem was the fact that the actual cable that connects the trackpad to the motherboard is glued onto the palm rest right underneath where the trackpad is. That made it a little bit difficult for me which um, I'd say is probably the hardest part of the installation is to put the cable into the new trackpad because as you may not know this trackpad actually has a slightly smaller opening for where that cable goes in the bottom compared to the old trackpad so you don't really have as much finger space to go in you'd need to use a pair of little tweezers or something which I did use to get at least one corner in, or you could just use your fingers to get a corner in, and then afterwards you could just straighten it out with your fingers and plug it in straight in. So that's what I did. I ended up having a little bit more slack in the cable, which I didn't like, but oh well, what will you do about that? It's not really too bad. Um, this trackpad overall is very nice. It's much better than the old one. It has actually a very nice click to it. If you want to hear it again, I'll shut up and then you'll hear it. So I'm just going to click on it. It doesn't go down as much as the other one. It has very low travel and it's actually very nice. Um, at the beginning, the trackpad almost felt like a little bit too grippy. The There was too much friction between my finger and the trackpad. But after using it for a little bit, just by wearing it out, you know, um, kind of wearing it in a little bit, it will go back to normal, but I still don't use the trackpad as much. But also the track point works flawlessly, there's no issues at all whatsoever. If you say like, okay, that's a little bit interesting, it doesn't do that usually. Um, go to eBay for example, I have to use my left hand because the camcorder is in my right. But you can smooth, you can scroll through, no issue using the scroll button left click, right click, you see left click, left click, no, uh -oh. left click, right click, everything works. Uh, this driver is the right one. If you have a slightly different version that they sent, um, it does also outline here that you do need to install a different driver, but I think that is about it for this um, trackpad installation video. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always feel free to leave a comment if you have one.